from just off Orwell Lane. Three night watchmen murdered, all at the odd location of a warehouse owned by Mr. Barton. Each victim looks to have been ripped apart by some sort of large wild cat. As Mr. Barton faces financial ruin, Lamont and Margot investigate themselves to get to the bottom of what is occurring, the results of which are disastrous. Will a wounded Lamont be able to secure the answer for what lays beyond these strange slangs? The Shadow knows. While not an episode that anyone will ever reference in their favorite top ten list, it remains a bit fun thanks to a script by George Lothar. Another interesting note, of passing relevance or otherwise, is that while mentioned, Officer Murphy does not actually appear in a speaking role. From December 31st, 1939, the last show of the decade that the show had started in, starring Bill Johnstone and Marjorie Anderson, The Cat That Killed. character who aids the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. The shadow uses his hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the unseen voice of the shadow belongs. Today's story, The Cat That Kills. <laughs> Lamont and Margot are walking near a waterfront warehouse in search of, well, listen. What I want to know, Lamont, is where we're going to find a tugboat captain with a wooden leg. <laughs> what I want to know, Margot, is when this scavenger hunt will be over. Getting tired? No, but I'd like to hire a small trailer to cart these little trophies we've collected. <laughs> I feel like a walking junk shop. Ah, no sporting blood, eh? Look, Margot. If carrying around a bicycle pump, a red toupee, a lawnmower, a mustache cup, and a bowl of goldfish calls for sporting blood, you're right, I haven't any. You forgot to mention little Johnny the Rabbit. Oh, yes, yeah. little Johnny the Rabbit. You haven't lost him, have you? <laughs> lost him? He's been chewing on my left ear for the past half hour. <laughs> if we find the tugboat captain, we have a good chance of winning the game, Lamont. Yes, if my left ear holds out. Can't say that this is quite my favorite part of town, however. It kind of gives me the worries. The waterfront's always like this. It's just so quiet. Not a soul for blocks around. Come on, look at how the fog seems to wrap itself around that warehouse like a... A ghost? Yes. Yeah. No! Listen, don't mention ghosts around here, please. <laughs> What's the matter, Margaret? You're not a... <laughs> what was that? I don't know, but it came from up there on the roof of that warehouse. Wait here for me, Margo. Oh, no, you don't. I'm coming with you. Oh, you can. Oh, just try and lose me. Oh, well, come on then, but hurry, Margo, hurry. Well, Lamar, I'm all out of breath. We're almost at the roof, Margo. One more flight of stairs. This warehouse must be 50 stories high. No, it's only 10. Wait. Here's the door leading to the roof. Now get behind me. No telling what's on the other side. Listen. What's that? It sounds like... like a cat. That's the loudest cat I've ever heard. The monster. Quiet. I'm going to open this door. What do you see? It's pretty dark. Fog's clearing, though. The moon will be out in a second. For the time being, let's wait here. Mom, that cat howling. Frightening. Yes, I don't like it, Margo. There, here comes the moon. I can see the roof now, and... Lamont! Oh, Lamont, look! A cat! 
A cat bending over the body of a man. It's a cat, all right, but the size of it. Why, it's almost as big, as big as you are. It's monstrous. Monstrous is the word, all right. And that sees us. Don't move, Margot. may spring for us. No. He's backing away toward the edge of the roof. Now well, we'll see what this is all about. Hold on, don't follow it. I've got to get a closer look at it. The weirdest thing I've ever seen. Hold on, you mustn't. I don't think it'll spring. Still backing toward the edge of the roof. Yes, but once you get to the edge, it'll turn on you. It'll have to. No cat can jump ten stories. I'm prepared for that. There. Yeah. It's at the edge of the roof. Look out. If it springs. Jump, the mud. It jumped off into space. It leaped, all right. Ten stories. Can you see anything down there? Nothing. Nothing but blackness. Well, before we go down, we'd better have a look at this body over here. Yes, I suppose so. Yeah. I'll strike a match. See better. The size of that cat. Almost as big as a tiger. Oh, it's hideous. It was hard to say the least. Now, well, we'll see about this body here. Oh. What is it? Don't look, Marco. Oh, Lamont. Oh, no. I told you not to look. Oh, I couldn't help it. The match flared up and I couldn't help but see. The Monty's throat. It wasn't pretty. Looks as if the claws of that cat just dug in and ripped. He's dead. No, oh, Lamont, please. I'm sorry. Well, what do you make of it? Margot, this is unbelievably weird. A cat that kills. A cat the size of a tiger. A cat that can leap into space and fall ten stories. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense right now, Margot. But it will make sense before I'm through. Now, Mr. Barton, if you'll only calm down, I... Calm down? How on earth do you expect me to calm down, Commissioner Weston, when these horrible things are happening in my warehouse? There's nothing... The death of that watchman last night was the third murder in a month. Oh, you've got to do something, Commissioner. My business is being ruined. My men are all quitting. The warehouse is getting a bad name. Mr. Barton, as I've told you, we're doing everything we possibly can. There are some cases that just can't be broken oh, overnight. The whole try. thing's fantastic. I've never heard of anything like it. Greetings, Commissioner I... Weston. Oh, it's you, Cranston. Well, as long as you're here, come on in. I thought I'd bring a little cheer into your life. So I dropped around and uh, brought Margo with me. Fine, fine. Hello, Miss Lane. This is all I needed right now. Now, now, Commissioner, you know we're impervious to flattery. I'm afraid I can't visit with you right now, Cranston. I'm up to my eyes in one of the strangest cases ever came my way. Really? Fantastic, Cranston. Unbelievable. I, oh, by the way, this young chap here is Mr. Barton. How do you do, Mr. Barton? How do you do, Mr. Barton? Barton owns a warehouse on Water Street. A warehouse on Water Street? Why, Lamont? Please, Margo. Three murders have been committed on the roof of that warehouse in the past month. Three in one month? Well, who were the victims? we all watchmen, Mr. Cranston. The bodies were were horribly mangled. Lamont, I was trying to say that that's the same. Ow! What's the matter? I I twisted my foot. Oh! I'm telling you, Commissioner, this thing has got to end. You've simply got to do something, and you've got to do it fast. Mr. Barton, please. My men have been investigating this case for weeks. There's absolutely nothing to go on. Nothing but those confounded claw marks we found on the neck of every victim. Uh, how about sending a few officers along to guard the watchman? We tried that, Cranston. Nothing happened while my men were there. Oh, I see. Well, we decided the murderer, whoever or whatever he may be, had struck for the last time. We kept working on the case, of course. But we didn't think it necessary to keep men on continuous duty. As it turned out... As it turned out... The very next night, another watchman was murdered. His throat completely... Well, there's no need to describe it. If only we had some idea as to how these murders are committed. Well, have you taken adequate precautions, Commissioner? Night and day, yes. We've surrounded that warehouse with men. We've guarded every entrance, every exit. And yet the murderer's been able to do his work without leaving a single clue, mind you. I'm beginning to believe in ghosts. Well, all I know is that I'm losing business. The warehouse is getting a bad reputation. People are saying the place is haunted. Now I need a watchman and I can't get one. No one will take the job, I suppose. Well, you can't blame him, can you? No, I suppose not. I was just thinking, Mr. Barton, I uh, might be able to help you out. Oh, if you could, Mr. Cranston. I have a friend, rather an old fellow, 
would be only too glad to get the job, I think. Oh, fine. If I send him around to see you, will you try him? Try him? I'll welcome him with open arms. Uh, you send him around to my office at the warehouse tonight, will you? I certainly will. Well, Margot, you and I had better get along. We're interrupting the inspector's business. Well, oh, Cranston, you've always wanted to be a detective. Why don't you go home and figure out this case? Thanks. I think I will. Goodbye, Mr. Barton. I'll send your new watchman around to you tonight. Oh, I'm indebted to you, Mr. Cranston. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, goodbye, Cranston. Well, he did get you a new watchman anyhow. Lamont Cranston, I wish you'd wear sneakers. Sneakers, Margot? Why? You kicked my ankle in there. I thought you'd broken it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Margot. But little girls should be seen and not heard. Mm-hmm. And just who is this old man you're going to send around to Mr. Barton? I don't recall your knowing any poor old man. Well, you forget I have a wide and varied acquaintance with people in all walks of life. Mm -hmm. I know a very fine old fellow who'll jump at the chance to spend a night on that warehouse roof. And uh, who is it? Who is it? Why, old man Cranston, of course. <laughs> oh, you sound like the boy who played Methuselah in my high school play. You certainly don't mean that you're going to take that job. I certainly do. Don't you see, Margot? I've got the edge on Weston and the police. They know nothing about the monstrous cat we saw last night. And because of that, they're handicapped. They don't know what to look for, what to expect. But I do. Well, what are you going to do? Tonight I'll be on that roof waiting for the cat myself. And something tells me our feline murderer will get a reception he's not prepared for. <laughs> to attract your attention, didn't I? Well, don't make that particular sound again. Say, I, I think you're scared. I am, for you. Uh, for me, eh? Well, this is no place for you, Margo. Oh, it's as good as any other I can think of at the moment. Margo, you've got to get out of here. That cat may show up any minute. I'd, I don't want you in the way when he does. Well, have I ever gotten in your way? No, but this time it's different. Whatever happens is going to happen fast. Oh, sorry, Lamont, I'm not leaving. Of all the stubborn... Well, that won't do you any good either. Oh, Lamont, you've got to let me stay. I couldn't bear it any longer, waiting to hear from you and wondering if the same thing had happened to you that happened to those other men. Lamont, don't send me away. If you're in danger, my place is with you. All right, darling. Turn off the charm. You can stay. But keep out of the way, please. Whatever happens, don't interfere. I won't. Lamont, this cat, what do you make of it? I don't know, Margot. But I'm almost sure it's not a cat. Not a... No. If it is a cat, then it's a freak, something out of the ordinary. I'm inclined to think it's some form of a, a leopard, a, a black leopard, perhaps. It might even be... Yes? Might even be what? No. A man could never leap ten stories into that yard below and live to tell about it. Well, Lamont, how are you going to handle it? You haven't got a gun. And that, that thing looks so ferocious. I brought a few things with me. A bullhide whip and ropes to tie the thing up with. I intend to drive the cat into that corner over there with the whip. That's the one spot on the roof where he can't leap off. Then I'll... Listen. Come. Remember we heard that cat howling the other night. Now listen to me, Margot. When the cat reaches here, it'll do something to attract the attention of the watchman it believes to be somewhere in the building. That's how those other watchmen were lured up here to the roof. They heard something that attracted their... There it is, Lamont. I can see it in the moonlight. Oh, Lamont, it, it's monstrous. Quiet. Watch it. Just watch it. It broke a pane of glass in the skylight. And that's to attract the watchman inside the building. Look out now. I'm going to swim this bullwhip and try to frighten him into that corner. Whatever you do, Margo, don't leave this spot. Now then, I'll see what sort of a cat tamer I am. You struck him. Look out, he's turning toward you. 
Come on, his eyes are blazing. I think this whip will soon subdue him. He's getting ready to spring. Come on, look out. He's coming for you. Oh, you blast you. Cranston sent the man over as he promised. Yes, yes, Commissioner Weston. He arrived all right yesterday afternoon. Uh, he was an old man. He was very anxious to get something to do. I told him the whole story. All about how... All about how three watchmen had been murdered on the roof. Yeah. Uh, and he still wanted the job. Yes, he told me not to worry about him. Said he'd be all right. Now he's nowhere to be found. There's not a trace of him anywhere. I tell you, Commissioner, I'm going out of my mind. Uh, you and me both. Frankly, Barton, I'm up a tree. Oh, I'm not blaming you, Commissioner. I know you're doing everything you possibly can, but you know, I'm beginning to wish my father had left this blasted warehouse business to his partner instead of me. What do you mean? Well, my father had a partner, a fellow named Blanchard. Blanchard was a crook, so my father finally bought him off. Well? Well, when Dad died, Blanchard came to me with some crazy story about the warehouse business rightfully belonging to him. Yeah? He said my father had cheated him out of his share. Oh, it was a lot of foolishness, of course. It... But I wish now I'd given him the business lock, stock, and barrel. <laughs> On the contrary, Mr. Barton, you'll be glad you didn't. Well, who's that speaking, Commissioner? Hey, it sounds like the shadow. You're right, Commissioner. Where is he? I don't see him. No one ever sees the shadow. But I, I don't know. Now, don't be alarmed, Barton. I'm not going to harm you. In fact, I'm here to help you. It's all right, Barton. This is not the first time I've spoken with the unseen voice. Well, I've heard of the shadow, but I never believed he existed. Ah, but I do, Mr. Barton. I've clouded your mind so that you cannot see me. But I'm in this room. It's been a long time between visits, Shadow. What is it this time? Commissioner, I've come to help you break this warehouse case. You, ah. you mean my warehouse? You know who the murderer is? I don't know who he is, but I think I know how he accomplishes his work. I can show you how to capture him, but you've got to help me. Oh, will I? You just tell me what to do and I'll do it, all right. Good. The murderer, the thing that's been killing your watchmen, is a cat. At least it looks like a cat. A cat, Shadow? What? Yes, but no ordinary cat. This one's as big as you are, Commissioner. And in some strange way, it's able to leap off the roof of that warehouse and escape. Oh, impossible. That warehouse is ten stories high. I've seen it happen, believe me. But whether you believe it or not doesn't matter. What is more important, Mr. Barton, is that you spend tonight on that roof alone. Me? Well, well You've got I don't to do know. It. I... This murderous cat thing still hasn't accomplished whatever he's trying to do at your warehouse. I have reason to believe that he'll be returning there tonight. Now, will you do as I ask? Come on, Barton, what do you say? I'll send an officer along with you. Okay, I'll do it. You know, if I hadn't been such a coward, I'd have done it long ago. Well, what else am I to do? Nothing. Just be there on the roof. And now you, Commissioner. Yes, Shadow. Besides detailing an officer to stay with Barton... I want you to throw a cordon of men not only around that warehouse, but around the entire block. Every bit of that territory must be kept clear, and no loophole must be left open to permit the cat's escape. I'll see to it. Now then, there's another warehouse not far from Barton's. It's taller than Barton's by two or three stories. I want your riot squad to set up searchlights on that roof and be ready to play them down on the roof of Barton's warehouse when I give the word. Searchlights? What in the world do you want with searchlights? Just do as you're told, Commissioner. And I think I can promise you we'll solve this case tonight. Well, I can't understand why you're going to all this trouble, Shadow. I'm sworn to the tracking down of criminals. I've dedicated my life to the eradication of crime as far as possible. But there's more to it this time. 
There's someone in danger whom I must save. If it's not too late. If it's not too late. A friend of yours? I say, is it a friend of yours? He doesn't answer. I might have known. He's gone. He goes usually just as quietly and mysteriously as he comes. Breaking this case must mean a great deal to him. I've never heard him speak that way before. Well, I'll do my part tonight. How about you, Commissioner? I've been in this business a long time, Barton, and I've learned a good deal. But there's one thing I've learned above everything else. When the shadow tells you to do something, Mr. Barton, do it. And tis me, Seamus Clancy of the Donegal Clancy's, that's telling you, Mr. Barton. This is a night for goblins and pixies, and for banshees, too. Oh, Clancy, for heaven's sake, be quiet. Bad enough sitting up here on this roof waiting for a giant cat. You don't have to make it worse by all this talk of banshees and goblins and whatnot. Well, it was only passing the time I was, Mr. Barton. It's lonely I get just to sitting here in the dark, not saying a word. Uh. Uh, did they get the searchlight set up all right? Yes, yes, they did. The shadow said when he wanted them, he'd yell for them. Now, there's a modern banshee for you. That shadow. You can't see him, but... Quiet. Listen. Now, what do you think would be the meaning of that caterwauling? Sounds to me like a signal. You better get ready, Clancy. I've got a feeling that something is about to happen. Look, Clancy, that cat! Sense in heaven, tis a monster. Get back in the shadows. Don't let it see us. Oh, no, we can't let him see us. Oh, devil take it, I trip you. You've given us away, the thing sees us. It's coming for us. Clancy, look at those eyes. They're blazing like coals of fire. If <laughs> it's thinking I am, I'd better be drawing my revolver. You better be quick. There. Ah, I missed him. Clancy, don't shoot again. Who the devil? This is the shadow speaking to you, Clancy. I want to take that cat alive if I can. All right. You can stop that hissing and waving of claws, my friend. The game is up. Did you hear me? You're not fooling anyone. You're not a cat. You're a man. A man disguised as a cat. You still insist on play acting, eh? Well, the show's over and you can take that costume Look off. Look out, Shadow, wherever you are. He's backing toward the edge of the roof. Wait, I'll stop him. Stay where you are, Barton. Those claws may not be real, but they're pretty dangerous. We hand steadier now, Mr. Shadow. Let me bring him down. Don't shoot, Clancy. Backing toward the edge of the roof, eh, cat? Going to jump, are you? Well, go ahead. We're ready for that, too. There he goes. Lights! Lights! Turn there on comes. the searchlights! Oh, they're making there everything come. plain as day. Look! Look down there! Oh, heavens, he's swinging in midair. He's swinging back and forth. He's on a trapeze, Barton. Oh, a yeah. trapeze hanging from a wire that's strung between this warehouse and the next. There. He's off the trapeze and hanging onto the wire. He's pulling himself across to that window. Oh, you'll get away. They'll never get to him in time. Perhaps they can't, but I can't. Oh, you don't mean you're going to leap for that trapeze? Oh, no, it's suicide, man. Suicide. That may be... But I told you there was someone in danger whom I've got to save. This is the only way I can do it. Here goes. Oh, sense above, you'll be killed. Oh, you. You're back again. Something went wrong. Bungling fools tried to trap me. <laughs> As if they could. I was too smart for them. By the time they get here, I'll be gone. Oh, what? What are you going to do with that knife? That, my dear, is for you. You don't think I'm going to leave you here alive so you can give me away to the police, do you? Oh, you... You're mad. I should have killed you when I brought you here last night. You don't know what you're doing. Keep away from me. Now, don't be afraid. The knife is sharp. Get my away. Dear. Stop. It'll all be over in a no. minute. No. <laughs> That's right, Mr. Catman. It will be all over in a minute. All over for you. <laughs> my wrist. What is it? Something's crushing my wrist. Drop the knife. Oh, Lamont, Lamont. What are you talking about? I can't see anyone. Oh, my wrist. You can't see me, Blanchard, but I think you can feel the grip I have on you. Drop that knife before I break your arm. That's better. Who, who are you? I am the Shadow. You've heard of me, perhaps. I've heard of you, all right. How did you get here? By using your trapeze. A clever act, Blanchard. Huh? Just as good as it was 20 years ago. What do you know about that? I know all about you, Blanchard. 20 years ago, you were a pretty famous trapeze artist in a circus. You had an act in which you dressed as a cat and did dangerous dives from a trapeze. Later, you became Barton's partner in the warehouse business. The business belonged to me. Barton cheated me. And you took this method of forcing Barton's son to sell out to you cheaply. 
Well, the game is up. That's what you think, Mr. Shadow, but you haven't trapped me yet. This building is surrounded, Blanchard. You're cornered. Oh, no, there's still the trapeze. I can still get away. <laughs> you forgot the trapeze. Come on, stop him. The window's open. <laughs> you can't stop me. He's climbing out the window. Stop, Blanchard. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Shadow. <laughs> Lamont, he's gotten away, the trapeze. There was no trapeze this time, Margot. I cut it down. Well, the worst part of the whole thing, Lamont, was that I thought the cat man had killed you that night on the roof. No, I was just stunned, that's all. When I came to, you were both gone. That's when I first suspected that he must have some means of crossing to the other building. Well, you couldn't have found the trapeze. He kept it hidden during the day, and at night he'd attach the wire that ran between the buildings. He was clever, all right. Say, Margot, Hmm. I wonder who ever won that scavenger hunt. (laughs) Well, we didn't. What did you ever do with all our trophies? (laughs) Well, I returned the bicycle pump, sent the toupee out for shampoo, (laughs) sold the lawnmower, and lost the mustache cup. What about little Johnny the rabbit? Little Johnny? Yes. You mean little Joni? No, Johnny. Well, his name might be Johnny, but he was the mother of seven babies this morning. Oh, Lamont. <laughs> Today's program is based on a story copyrighted by the Shadow Magazine. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. The Shadow Magazine is on sale at your local newsstand. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The Shadow knows. (laughs) 